anybody that knows me will know that I'm somewhat wary about digital money, particularly the new central bank digital currency, or in this country, as they're calling it, the digital pound. Very nervous about that coming in because of the, of course, the carbon credit score that you get with it that's um, based on well, whether you've been good or bad, whether you've eaten too much meat or travelled too far, and the fact that the CBDCs is programmable and so that they, somebody, somewhere, at the time that you are making a purchase, can interfere with that purchase if they so wish. They could restrict you buying something or they could restrict the area that you buy that something in. So in other words, you can't get petrol five miles out of your town uh, because they don't want you to travel. Uh, so I'm very wary about this whole CBDCs thing. But I'm getting a little bit more concerned about Bitcoin. Loads of people telling me that Bitcoin is the answer, you know, this is it. And in fact, somebody very kindly only recently sent me this book and it's called The Bitcoin Standard. You may have seen it, you may have read it. And it says on here, the decentralized alternative to central banking. So with central bank digital currency, which is the thing that's been threatened to come in at any moment, there would be a central bank and that central bank would have the opportunity, as I just said, to be able to restrict what you do through their programmable money scheme. Now, we, we sort of have a central bank anyway, as I understand it. If you're, using, if you're using your credit card or your debit card, your transaction goes past and it goes through a central bank. And in that central bank, there'll be the ledger that has all the transactions that you do. Only, as I understand it, it isn't live as you do it. It happens at the end of the day. So you might make four or five different purchases throughout the day. And it's not until the end of the day that this all these purchases get actually put through the central bank, which means nobody knows necessarily what it is you're buying at the time of purchase. So you can get in your car and you can drive for five miles or 10 miles or 100 miles and it's not programmable so nobody can actually prevent you from buying it. Unless of course the bank decides for whatever reason that you're a bad egg anyway, a bit like Nigel Farage and just switch your bank account off. But that's a completely different issue to what we're saying. So. Bitcoin, of course, is now claimed to be this decentralized alternative. And the business of having the money on your phone so that uh, you become your own bank account, your own bank manager, if you like, and you can do your transactions without any central bank getting involved or anyone else having access to the ledger and all the things that you are um, buying and transacting and selling and, and all of that. So in theory, that sounds great. Now, my number one problem is that this is backed up by nothing. It's just ones and zeros on some servers, which apparently are limited, which makes it a scarce resource. But to me, it's just digital code, a bit of electricity and some chips and it doesn't actually exist in the real world and that somewhat uh, worries me whereas if you've got you know real silver um, and or gold or or even barrels of oil or big tub of bananas they are real commodities that you could possibly monetize somehow anyway it's the bitcoin i want to get to in this um, monologue because it was pointed out to me that although everybody says the Bitcoin is decentralized, it was pointed out to me that that's actually not true. And let me explain. When, now I may have got this wrong, and please correct me if this is incorrect, but from my understanding is, <clears throat> the thing about Bitcoin is, you've got it on your phone, you go and buy something, and that transaction is updated on the ledger. Now, this ledger is not kept in one central place. It's actually copied immediately across all these different servers, which I think they call the blockchain. 
So all these different servers across the world, all sorts of people can be part of the blockchain as far as I'm aware. And the ledger gets updated on all of these different computers, meaning that it isn't centralized. Or does it? Because actually it's still the same ledger. It's just copies of it. So if you were to, let's say, by some magic shenanigans, get all those data servers where this ledger has been placed and copied and just put them into one building, all on independent servers, but put them into one building, the ledger is just copied across to all these different servers. But if you put them all in one building, it becomes centralized. They're just on different computers, all in the same building. But then return them back to all the independent places where they were. They're still joined by wires and they're all updating at exactly the same time. So isn't that really centralized? I mean, the fact that they're spread out across the world means that they're not in the same place, but it's the same ledger, just copies of it. Doesn't that leave it slightly vulnerable so that if somebody was able to nobble one of these data servers, not just the central one or just the main one or wherever, where, whichever one's updated the, the server first, but any one of them and nobbled the ledger, it would get copied across all of them, wouldn't it? And therefore that makes it vulnerable doesn't it? Or is there something that I'm missing? The fact that they just, they're all joined together by wires or, or Wi-Fi, they're all connected and they're just copies of the same ledger. It's still centralized information, isn't it? Because it's just, they're just copies of the same thing. They're not independent ledgers, which would be truly decentralized. So is it centralized or isn't it? And if it isn't centralized, and it's actually the same thing just spread across the world, then how do they call it decentralized? And is it really then an alternative to centralized banking? That's where my, my problem goes. And actually, if we want a, a decentralized system, surely then we don't want copies of the same ledger with everybody's transactions on it. We, we want individual transactions on just our own phone and or however you're keeping the data on your computer or wherever and on somebody else and 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 everybody's a unique and individual just as it would be if you've got a pocket full of coins nobody else has a copy of those pocket full of coins nobody else knows what your transactions were if you're buying and selling with coins or tokens or anything else. So my question is, is Bitcoin a bit of a red herring? Is it really decentralized? Or is it actually a bit of a, a dodgy thing?